Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars and you're watching another Luthier's Quick Tips. A couple of weeks ago, I visited a website for a company that sells kit guitars. And in, on their website, they claim that you don't need any specialized tools to assemble their guitars. And I had to kind of laugh because in truth, if you've ever built a guitar, whether it's from a kit or scratch, or if you do your own maintenance and repair work, you know that there are some highly specialized tools that you need to do the work correctly. In fact, I tell people, if you're gonna build a, a kit guitar, you may find once it's completed that it, it needs some extra setup work in order to play properly. And if you don't have the right tools to do it, you're gonna to wanna to take it into a luthier who is equipped to make the adjustments that are necessary to get the guitar to play right. At any rate, it got me to thinking, there are in fact a lot of tools that I use over and over and over every single day that really don't qualify as specialized tools. In fact, some of them are items, they're household items that I repurpose specifically for certain tasks in the uh, fabrication uh, process of making a guitar. So I'm gonna bring you in a little closer and show you some of these tools that I use. It might give you some ideas about how to equip your shop. Now I'll try to put links to some of these tools in the description below, but as you'll see, some of these tools are not items that you can actually go out and buy. It's just stuff you've got probably laying around your house right now that you can repurpose uh, for the use of making guitars. Okay, so the first item I'm gonna mention is this kind of grubby looking towel that I have draped over my guitar setup stand. This is a microfiber faux fur towel that you can get at most dollar stores. And really any kind of a similar item to this works great and what it does is it it it's a disposable inexpensive surface that i can set my guitar on while i'm doing setup work and i don't have to worry about scratching the finish because this stuff is really soft and once it gets too grubby to keep using you just toss it out and grab another one okay next up helping hands helping hands um, are a great tool for use in holding wire as you're soldering up electronics. And if you've ever soldered electronics, you know how fussy it can get trying to uh, tin wires and things like that. And this is a great tool for doing that. And what I've done on mine is I've put heat shrink tubing on the uh, little alligator jaws on this a holder and then shrank it down and that helps to prevent damage to anything that I might be placing inside these uh, jaws as I'm soldering it up. So uh, definitely consider helping hands. Next up is a wire stripper. Now this pretty much goes without saying you need a wire stripper especially if you're wiring up your own guitar controls. The problem is most of the strippers on the market that are readily available are too big for the kind of wires that we typically deal with when wiring up guitar electronics especially for example uh, four conductor shielded wiring that is used on humbucker pickups. The uh, stripper that I use is this Pros Kit CP301G, and really it's the CP301G that's important. If you do a search for that, you'll find these type of wire cutters and, and, and strippers, and they often will have different brand names on it. But this goes all the way down to 30 gauge, so you can strip some really tiny wires without cutting the inner core with this tool. So. Uh, this is a this is something I use constantly when wiring up my guitar electronics. Next up, tweezers. I have a variety of different tweezers, and these are just the two that I use the most. This is a really sharp, fine tip tweezer, and I think I got this from a local hobby store that sells, you know, radio control cars and planes and models and stuff like that. This one, I actually got this from a surgeon who uh, 
after performing some minor surgery on me, he said, you want these tweezers? They're yours, you paid for them. So I said, sure, and I've been using them ever since and they work great. Okay, so next up, a household item, credit cards. Every time you get an old credit card or a, you know, a credit card in the mail that you're not going to use, set them aside. They're great for applying um, like grain filler on a guitar. And the nice thing is, is they have rounded corners so they don't leave nibs uh, or streaks in the uh, filler as you're applying it uh, to the surface. But I keep a bunch of these handy and they work great for that purpose. Rubber erasers. I get these from the dollar store in multi-packs and I get small ones. You know, this is typically what you would expect uh, size-wise for a rubber eraser, but they also sell these really big ones. These work great as flexible sanding uh, blocks. So when you're level sanding a finish, if you're working on a contoured top, these work great to conform to that surface as you're doing the sanding. And you can get these in, you know, this is the size that I got recently, but I've seen them even bigger than this. And if necessary, you can cut them down to size and make custom sized sanding blocks. So uh, check these out at your local dollar store. They're really useful for that purpose. Speaking of sanding blocks, I also keep a selection of different sized hardwood sanding blocks and this one is a favorite of mine i've rounded over the edges and corners to prevent gouging of the surface but i can attach a piece of sandpaper directly to the block with some double-sided sticky tape and it's really useful to have a hard block sanding block because um, when you're level sanding if you're using something soft and pliable and flexible like this rubber eraser, it will tend to conform to any of the irregularities that are in the surface of your clear coat, whereas the hard block won't. So it's going to sand down the high spots and make them level with the low spots. And in the end, once you've buffed out your clear coat to a mirror-like shine, that reflection will be perfect and, and there won't be any wavy distortion. And that's something that uh, a lot of guitarists look for in a high quality, high gloss clear coat finish. Okay, next up, the usual expected X-Acto knife or hobby knife, depending on where you buy it and who you buy it from. But uh, I use the uh, standard, these are the Exacto number 11 blades, and I buy them by the box on eBay, 100 count. And I go through these things like crazy. And this is a tool that I am constantly reaching for. And you can see it's pretty worn out from uh, years of use. But in fact, this one I bought from Stumac, and it had a Stumac logo on it, but it's worn out. So. Uh, definitely want to make sure you've got an X-Acto knife handy. Okay, so next up are hex wrenches. And I recommend that you get a set of metric as well as imperial. And these are going to be useful on a variety of different situations involving guitar components which are fitted with hex wrench type um, set screws. So you want to make sure you have the right size. You don't want to try to force an imperial hex wrench into a metric set screw. Yeah, even though sometimes you can get that to work, you'll end up stripping it and then the screw becomes nearly impossible to remove. And then speaking of screws, I have several sets of these cheap Harbor Freight uh, screwdriver kits. And these typically have your Phillips head, your uh, slot flathead screws, it also has um, your hex uh, bits as well as your uh, star bits, your T-nuts. And it also often will come with one of these extensions so that you can attach this and then go at the back of your bridge saddles to raise and lower the saddles without hitting the back of the guitar or the top of the guitar. And these are cheap. 
And like I said, I've got several of them and they just work really well for those small screws that are so common on guitars. Next up, we get a couple of wrenches. The first is a spanner wrench. And this is a tool that I use for tightening the nuts on uh, potentiometers as well as some of the uh, different types of tuning machines that have a nut uh, you know, that is used to hold the tuning machine into place. These work really well for that. Uh, then I have, this is kind of a specialty tool, and I purchased this a while back just to fill out an order I had placed with Stumac. But what this is designed for is to specifically tighten the, um, that ring nut on a three-way toggle switch. Now normally I would just grab the back of the switch from the back side of the guitar and the cavity and then tighten with my thumb. But with this tool, I can get it really tight, professionally tight. Another item I use a lot, these are plastic um, blow mold packaging containers. And I can't remember even what these were for, probably some type of nut or bolt. But I save these packages and I use them to mix up epoxy in. And that's a great way to repurpose something that normally gets tossed in the trash. All right, and then we have a couple of magnifying tools. This is a magnifying loop. Uh, it's a Schneider loop uh, for power. Uh, these are made in Germany. They're, they're kind of expensive, but I use these when I'm trying to, to check the progress of my uh, fretwork. You know, if I'm recrowning or dressing fret ends, I like to use one of these uh, to help uh, gauge that progress. And then I also have a magnifying headset thing. I don't even know what you call these, but uh, these are great for when you're wiring up electronics and you're over the age of 50. <laughs> Your eyesight may be starting to uh, decline a bit and having one of these magnifying tools helps you to see as you're working. So definitely would suggest uh, a tool like this, especially if you're an older guitar builder. And I would recommend the loop for anybody because you can really get in there close and see what you're doing on your frets. All right, then what I have is some, um, um, this is synthetic steel wool. And I actually have a variety of, of different grades of this stuff. Uh, for example, this is the Singalot green pad. This is, I believe, a Norton synthetic pad. And then this one is a maroon double lot. And then I've got, let's see here. I've got the white, which is 4 aught, and then I also have what's left of the gray, which is the triple aught. So I keep a variety of different grays, and I use this for polishing frets, for scuffing clear coats in between coats, and for general cleanup work on the guitar when I want to use something that's not as aggressive as sandpaper, but definitely more um, effective than just a cloth. But at the same time, it isn't gonna leave little tiny metal uh, particles that you would get when using regular genuine steel wool. All right, guys, well, unfortunately I've run out of time and believe me, there are a lot of other tools that I'd like to talk about. Uh, in fact, I'll probably revisit this topic in a future episode and, and I'll keep talking about some of the interesting little items that I use constantly while building guitars. So, you know, keep an eye out for that in the future. But in the meantime, I hope you found this video useful. Give me a thumbs up. That's always a big help for all of us YouTube creators whenever you give us a thumbs up. And uh, make sure if you don't subscribe to this channel and like watching videos on building guitars and would like to learn more about the whole process, hit that subscribe button, click the bell for notifications, make sure you go into your YouTube settings for your account and allow notifications, otherwise 
clicking that bell isn't going to do anything. And as always, if you would like to show my channel some support, head over to eGuitarPlans.com, purchase a plan for either a guitar or one of the tools that I use on a daily basis in my shop for building guitars. And even if you don't build the guitar or the tool, just know that your purchase is helping to support this channel. In fact, you can also uh, drop down below the description down below and purchase a t-shirt. Uh, that'll help out a little bit. Uh, at any rate, uh, until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.